In Climate Watch, Germany has set a new temperature record for the month of June as the European heat wave continues to scorch the continent. A temperature of 101.5 degrees was recorded near the Polish border. That breaks the previous record set just a few days ago. All-time June records have also been set in Poland and the Czech Republic. Temperatures in France have dropped off to the high 90s, but the heat and humidity are still causing problems. Just a few days ago, the country set an all-time record of 114 degrees. And in Vatican City, Pope Francis is praying for people who have suffered from the heat wave. The weather has been blamed for at least two deaths in Europe. For a long time, climate scientists were hesitant to link weather events like the heat wave to climate change, but that is starting to change. Let's bring in meteorologist and CBS News weather contributor Jeff Berardelli, who joins me now on the set. Good to see you. Good to be here. So, Jay, uh, you, you you spoke to Dr. James Hansen, yeah. Jeff, of Columbia University. He's a former NASA scientist, right. and he says the heat wave is caused by human-made global warming. How did he come to that conclusion? Well, first of all, he's James Hansen. So he's the most famous climate scientist in the world. Back in 1988, if you might remember, he addressed Congress. He basically told us we are we're going to have a big problem here. We are warming the atmosphere. So he's probably the most credible climate scientist in the world. And it's rare that you hear from climate scientists. I spoke to him and also Michael Mann, by the way, who's also an extremely famous climate scientist. Rare that you hear them say this is definitively or almost definitively uh, due to climate change and that's what they're saying about this now in terms of james hansen he did extensive research in his life on heat waves specifically in 2016 he did research uh, which links the mediterranean area and the middle east area more so than many other places in the world with heat waves basically saying that the whole temperature distribution have shifted so much that heat waves like the one in 2003 when you were in France and the one this year could be up to 100 times plus more likely because of human uh, human made climate change to give you an idea of the scale that we're looking at here yeah you mentioned uh, France back in 2003 I was living in France at the time and I'd never experienced heat like that in fact yeah. uh, you know in, generally in Europe people don't have air conditioners the way we do here in New York City where everybody right. has a little wall unit um, and that year I went out and got one uh, I think 70,000 people yeah. died across Europe uh, right. that year. Uh, what did we learn about that heat wave? All right, so that was actually the first heat wave to be attributed to climate change. It was found to be at least two times more likely than it would have otherwise been. That was kind of the birth of what we call climate attribution studies. So studies to determine how much of climate change, excuse me, how much of an event and a weather event is due to climate change. So that one was the first attribution study, and since then we've been doing a lot more. In fact, right now there's an ongoing climate attribution study on this particular heat wave in Europe, and it should be, we should have the results by sometime early this upcoming week. So the five hottest summers since 1500 AD have all occurred in the last five years? Yeah. That is remarkable. Well, in, what the does last, that say? in the last 17 years, so since 2002, actually. Okay, yeah, since right. 2002. So what does that say about climate change? Well, there's certain parts of the world that are warming faster than others. One of those uh, places is the Mediterranean and the Middle East. And so we're going to continue to see this happen, especially in places like the Middle East and Europe, uh, you know, as we head forward into the future. Uh, this is going to be a part of our everyday lives. In fact, James Hansen says the tropics in the Middle East are in danger of becoming practically uninhabitable by the end of the century in a business as usual scenario. So a lot of places when you combine heat and humidity in the tropics, in the Middle East, in the Mediterranean area, you may not be able to live there. Remember these people, a lot of them, like you said, don't have air conditioning. A lot of them are poor. They cannot shield themselves like we can. These people won't have any options. And also when you have so much heat, roasting the ground, uh, evaporating all the soil moisture. You cannot grow agriculture there anymore, so people do not have livelihoods. Even if they could survive the heat, they can't make a living. Hmm. And we know that that can also lead to wildfires, which we've seen burning across Spain. Yes, exactly, and we have that happening right now. And the report out of there is that manure spontaneously combusted, which apparently, and I didn't know this until a couple of days ago, can happen. So it gives you an idea of how hot, but also, 
how much that dries out the soil and it dries out the vegetation. And that is what causes these fires to grow bigger and last longer than they would have otherwise. When will Europe finally start to see a little bit of a cool off? I know France has already right. come down a little bit. So things are changing and, and it's going to start really tomorrow. Right now we have this big dome of high pressure that's across Europe. And, and really the core of it is over places like Germany uh, and Poland. That eventually is going to break. And, and believe it or not, in, in Russia right now, temperatures are 30 degrees below normal. So we have this really wavy jet stream, which we think may be related to climate change, changes that are happening in the Arctic. So everything's kind of connected. That actually should be suppressed starting tomorrow and Tuesday. So places like Berlin could be literally go from 100 degrees today to 80 degrees tomorrow, which is going to feel really nice. So a little, little nicer in northern Europe. But the heat is going to be stuck in the southern part of Europe. Uh, at least for the next few days. All right, Jeff Baradelli, always great to have you. Thank you very much. Always great to be here.